And tonight on the Friday Night Special, Epsom Salt and Other Natural Additives for Your Garden. Oh, hey, everybody. How are you doing? I thought it broke. No, it didn't broke. Okay. I was I'll being sneaky that time. <laughs> All righty. Let's see who all has in the side chat here. Says we got 14 people here and oh, got one thumbs up. Now I'll says eight. Well, StreamYard's slow on counting the thumbs up. Yep, yep. Unless, of course, that thumbs up's coming from Facebook. That could be it. All right. So, first one in tonight was um, Prep for It, followed by Kaylin Strain, and then the Kraken. Michael 58, then Courtney, Wide Family Farm. Who needs and... something mind-numbing at the moment, by the way? Well, what, what? Courtney said she needs something mind-numbing at the moment. Okay, that comment's down farther. I'm still way back at the no, top. No, that, that wasn't here. That was over on Facebook. Over on Facebook. Ah. Okay, uh, let's see. Uh, Discover, uh, Discover Sustainable. <laughs> Grammy Karen's in the house. Carol out of Fishes and Loaves Life. Butch Sand Hollow Homestead. Uh, you're making a lot of noise there in the background there. Uh, I, yeah, there we go. It's the house. He's nibbling. Yeah. And we got uh, G -G -G -G, uh, Butch Sand Hollow. I said that. Grammy Karen said that. Ginger Ninja. And Kathy, uh, North Star Prep Stetter. Well, Courtney, now, they used to watch a bunch of my videos. That should not be pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, um, I only have the Green Wizard email for Ron. I couldn't find – I thought I had one for Ron himself. Uh, if anybody has the an email for yeah, he's Ron – he's not answering that one right now for some reason. Yeah. If somebody has an email for Ron, the Green Wizard – Disney moment. Yeah, Disney moment. I for oh, so no one stop singing. Uh, the, the, the email he is using, let him know that um, I sent him the link on the Green Wizard one if he wants to come in because I was kind of counting on him and his expertise for this. Also, uh, hey Duncan and Jay and WD. Uh, so what I'm looking for here is. Gardeners that use other stuff, and let's let's start off the little slideshow first. You'll see what I'm talking about here first. So, let's get over here, and so let's, there it is. Boom. So, we all wish we ha could have the perfect garden of bright, luscious, desirable fruits and vegetables, and other yummy good things growing all over the place. All we need to know is how do we get it. How do we get these beautiful scenes here we see before us? Well, the answer might be is in what we're putting in there. Are we adding natural additives to make your garden better? Well, last week we talked about mistakes that um, uh, people make starting gardens and stuff. So basically this week we're, we're kind of focusing in on Number three, soil prep. And that is the end of that. I was hoping to have people in here to, set, to help me uh, go over it and stuff. That no, I know Al uh, knows a, a bit about it, but I'm going to uh, uh, gardeners like uh, Kathy and uh, anyone else out there that uh, would like to come up here, I'm going to drop the link for gardeners that put that know about stuff you guys put in your garden to make it better. So actually, I'm going to do it on this one over here instead. Because I do it on that one, it goes into Facebook. I don't need to put it out on Facebook. I just need to put it out here. So let's go here. Give me a second. I'm on a different computer. I've got to bring this back up again. Uh, now, Howie might even have some information, too. Is I mean, Howie, Howie in here yet? He have a dog on tropical garden up in his yard. Yeah, I forgot yeah. to put Howie on it. Dang it. <laughs> But he's using the uh, food force method. Yeah, who he, he adds some things, but um, let's see. There we go. Got that. There it is. Echo, 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 echo. 
Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That was the other one. Was not why was it's not supposed to have a mic on that, but it was doing the mic thing. So and speak the thing. So control V. Ah, it's the wrong one. It didn't take it. Okay, I'm gonna have to put it in on this one. Dang it. All right. So it goes out to uh, Facebook. Fake book. Hold on. Hold on. No, don't do that. I'll. I'll too late. I'll, too, I'll too late. Yeah. Yeah, because see, yeah, I could have pulled it up and throw it over there too. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, Kathy, uh, Butch, anyone that does gardening and stuff, and you're actively using not your typical, as, as uh, Ron would say, not using the PKH, uh, what is it, PKP or whatever it is, the uh, PK, PKN method, yeah, which is putting on chemical for a lot. There we go. Cracking through up the first one. Those are those are some of the additives. Hey Howie. Hey Howie. All right, let me pull. So I do have. Uh, homestead preacher. I do have something else here to read. I did some research online, and so what I came up with. So there were several websites out there, gardening websites, talking about. All right, there's a uh, butcher's favorite. And Lori says she does egg has eggs too. And blood meal. Okay, there's blood meal coming up here. All right. So let me read okay. some of the, some of the things I found here were interesting. Uh, the one the one said there are basically animal based soil amendments, mineral based soil amendments, and right. plant based soil amendments. Mm -hmm. And he started out with nine, and he, the nine things he gave was bat guano. But he also said that bat guano is a non-tentative source because by going into the cave to remove all the bat guano, guano in amounts, they disturb the habitat and the bats leave and go find another cave. There's also one major problem with that, folks, why they quit uh, bat guano mining. You get rabies from it. Yeah, there's a possibility on that, too. Oh, no, that's a proven right. fact because back yeah. in World War One and World War Two, they were wondering why all the miners are foaming at the mouth. <laughs> yeah. All right. The next one, which is also animal based, is your standard manure from livestock. Yep. Which includes cows, goats, pigs, rabbits, People. goats. No, that's not animal. That's human based. Um, and I just then drop the Green Wizards uh, YouTube channel in there. Okay. Cool. So uh, that's uh, the Green Wizards channel down there that Dave just put in. The next uh, thing to talk about was uh, worm compost, and which is probably one of the best things ever out there. And I got that up too, Dave. I got ready to pull that up. Okay. And something else I had never heard of before. <clears throat> and then, uh, and this year I'm finding I found it on several of the channels here. I mean, the um, blogs I was looking at. Green sand, not green eggs and ham, green sand. It's a mineral-based amendment. A slow-release soil conditioner. <clears throat> it is largely composed of, I'm going to mispronounce that, gluconite, a mineral harvested from ancient forest floors. Green sand is considered high in potassium trace minerals such as iron and magnesium. Hey, Mama Bear Prepping. Hey, Mama <clears throat> Folks, make sure you get real green sand. There is a fake green sand. Yeah. that is copper base, and that copper base has arsenic in it. So you don't want to poison your soil with arsenic. Yeah. And so what we have here on this, I just looked up on Amazon, yeah, because everybody goes looking at, at the, uh, the uh, Amazonians to see what they have. And there's organic green sand. All sorts of different ones of uh, all natural green sand. Ooh, kinetic sand. Oh. Will that work? No, I don't think the kinetic no. kid sand will work, but then, you know, neither will the decorative. Oh. You want the actual, you know, down to earth organic sand, you know, stone organic sand. You want the organ actual green sand for gardening. And uh, yeah, and I then need you know, to do I a shameless plug here, real quick. Okay, do a shameless <laughs> while you do your Disney impression there. Um, over on my Discord, for those who are on there can verify it, I've got over two gigabytes 
gigs of PDF files. And if you know anything about computers, PDF files are small. So there's a lot of information there. There is a lot of growing information inside that in my Discord server. So if you want, I can put up a link to the Discord server for you folks. There is a ton of information there and it's free. Oh, yeah. I don't charge for it. You can go in there and sign up for free. Uh, Jay, no, the green sand you find at the beach is from the beer party the night before. And, and that's don't not use really that green sand because it's algae based. Algae yeah. based have two problems. If you pick up blue green and throw it into your garden, you just nuke the whole garden with a toxin. And then yeah. the plants will pick it up, and guess who's going to eat it? Hey, Kathy. There's Kathy. Hi, Kathy. Yeah. And really quick, I want to go through this one. I, I found uh, I've had I've heard people talk about it, but I didn't know as much as I did after reading this. Comfrey is a, a plant-based uh, amendment because it actually has a deep, deep roots and mines the minerals and brings them up. And as it, you can get comfrey has all sorts of uses here besides the herbal uses. It talks about. Um, you know, using the, the leaves and stuff and everything, put, you, you know, you chop them up, use them as fertilizer, you can spread it out on the surface, you can turn it in and you get all those minerals it brings up. And that was another one that I found out. And the other, there's, you know, number six was compost, which I think everybody knows about, cover crops. And that's something my wife tried the first time this year and she found all sorts of cool stuff. And her garden is doing much better when she started, you know, taking care of the cover crops afterwards and turning them back in. Leaf mold. Have you guys ever heard of leaf mold? Mm -hmm. Or the uh, and it basically it's it's mold, simply leaf, leaf mulch that has aged two to three years, and I guess it has all that white. Um, I wish I was here. He knows the exact words for it. That white stuff. And, or uh, it's uh, called uh, how Howie. Howie knows it. It's um, it starts with an M. It's a type of fungus that grows in leaf mold. I got mine in a fifty-five gallon buckets with holes in it. And I take oak leaves, and I t wait until they turn black on the first year. I put in my test tube of mycelium in there. Mycelium is a very delicate fungus that will eat that and make leaf mold. It has to have a certain temperature. It cannot be in direct sunlight because it cooks the, the mold, the fungi. And once mm -hmm. that whole container is full of fungi, it looks like little tiny spider webs throughout the whole thing. And okay. then I, yeah, we got a question here from Mama Bear Prepping. If you guys haven't checked her out, she's got some interesting videos. I like, I'm, I've been watching them. Uh, so, what is something I use for my basic porch garden? I just started. I'm still in the seeding stage. Well, it's going to make some tea comp compost tea. Good or nah? Nah, too early. You have to wait until they're about this big. Yeah. If you give them too uh, thick, too small, when they're small, you don't give whiskey to a little kid or a baby. <coughs> there, baby, has some whiskey. No, yeah. you have to wait until they're grown about maybe five inches or six <coughs> inches, then slowly give them compost tea. It should be look like light, uh, very light tea color, not dark, yeah. light color. Because stronger you give it, you're going to have some weird changes in the plants, like. Too much nitrogen, not enough phosphorus. The best thing for um, starting out with the seeds and everything, <laughs> thanks Al, is to make sure that you hit, you're starting out with the best um, seed starting soil that you can use. Um, have a good organic mix, a loose mix, so that the um, the roots are getting the air that they need and all this other kind of thing. Um, if you can. Harvest rainwater, use the rainwater to, to um, water them with. Um, otherwise, uh, you know, just some good filtered water. Uh, you know, try to stay away from softened tap water. Right, uh, because it has, uh, like Kathy said, it has salts in it, iodized water yep. when you're softened. Another thing with uh, city water is if you uh, put that directly to the plants, it's going to go into shock because of the chlorine. I forget the other thing. Fl chlorine the fluoride, and, the fluoride yeah. and stuff in there. Yep. All of that's too harsh on them. 
Um, I usually just make sure that I've got, like I said, good soil and then watering them and then see what they're doing as they grow. Um, if they start growing really fast and are heavy feeders, you will soon be able to front tell what they need. Um, you know, if they're growing and their the leaves are really light green, they're just not looking very healthy, then make sure that they're getting like the extra potassium, you know, from bone meal or nitrogen or whatever it is that they would they would need in there. Um, sometimes just a good organic uh, liquid mix you can add to their watering is all that they need. But you gotta, so wait at least wait at least three weeks before you can um, start to tell if they need anything more. Um, otherwise, yeah. they'll get all the nutrients they need from from the uh, seed starting soil mix. You don't want to use just soil from the ground or even from your garden or um, potting soil. Make sure it's a seed starting mix. That's the best thing to do. Right. And um, Courtney, Night, right. Lori. If, Night, Lori. Uh, Courtney's right. If they're getting leggy, that means they're not getting enough light. Yeah. So if you got like a uh, um, hidden harvest, is it hidden harvest? Hidden harvest grow lights. Right. Put it over that and it'll c complete the light cycle. That's why they're growing leggy and kind of spindly. And make sure the lights are really close to your no. plants, to within a couple inches of the top of the plants. Yeah. yeah. That way it'll thicken out. Uh, yeah. I tell a lot of people, a lot of people just only do the pH or PPP on their soil. You want to get find out what's it's deficient. Is it deficient in iron, zinc, sulfur, um, phosphorus, potash? Uh, okay. Kathy, I forgot the other one. Uh, potassium, nitrogen, nitrogen. Yeah. No, nitrogen is a common. Sulfur. Uh, sulfur um, potassium. Um, uh, maybe maybe some sulfate. Phos phosphorus. You said that could be phosphorus. It's I use a blue rock dust because my uh, oh soil here is drained of uh, certain minerals, so I use the blue rock dust. Did you say okay. calcium? Yes, yeah. I think I said calcium. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, tomatoes will need the calcium, otherwise they get blossom and rot. Yeah. So. All right. What's Dave have up here? Let's see. That is his share. Oh. Hold on, let me go back. This, right. this is from Ms. Nina. Um, it's Ooh. a companion planting chart. I will post a copy of this on my Discord server for y'all to go check out at a later time. Okay. All right. Cool. All right. Um, one of the things here, um, one of the things here on the on the research I was doing, the ninth thing on the first website was wood chips. Of course, Howie's always already mentioned about layering food, uh, layering the soil, making a food soil. You know, over there. Um, Mama Bear Prepping, if you haven't checked out Food Forest Permaculture, check them out. Uh, one, of the other, one of the other sites I went to mentioned Ashes, Biochar, which is different, Bone and Blood Meal, which Courtney already mentioned, Green Sand, second one mentioned Green Sand, and Seaweed. My containers I got in California were actually used for seaweed fertilizer that they were um, giving to the farmers, and the farmers got them. And you know, here, take the container away. And so we got picked up containers, and they had about that much fertilizer still on the bottom. That link is to Howie's channel. Dave right. froze. Yeah. So Dave just said that links to Howie's channel down there. Now, one of the other other yeah. ones was talking about something which is which Howie's mentioned in here, and the Kraken, and Courtney mentioned earlier, um, was uh, cardboard. Uh, and newspapers for your layering, for your composting, eggshells as well for adding calcium, but seashells, if you have a way of getting seashells, if you're on the coastline where there are seashells and stuff you get inexpensively, seashells is uh, a good source of calcium as well. And of course, coffee grounds, and I found this, I found this very interesting, especially for me on this one. Coffee grounds have high nitrogen content along with other nutrients plants can use. Uh, this uh, improves the ability of the soil to hold water. Independent tests have shown that coffee grounds tend to be acidic, which means if you have soil like mine, which is very alkaline, I need to add 
uh, coffee grounds to it to balance it back towards the center. You could also increase the acidity in coffee grounds by adding apple cider vinegar to it and then pour it in direct. That'll shoot up your pH by two. Wow. Mm -hmm. Great. And also on seaweed like kelp, if you're on the coast, uh, kelp washes up on shore and you can harvest that. Do mm -hmm. not go into the water and harvest kelp. That is against the law. You have to wait until it comes to the shore. Because if you harvest kelp out in the ocean, that's poaching. And we know what happens to poachers. Yeah. yeah check out how we hey, Urban it. Grandpa Pepper. Yeah, there's, um, hey. th there were several really good articles out there that I found. One had a nice chart listing a whole bunch of stuff. I'm just going to blow off some, some stuff here that had on the chart. Alfalfa meal. Azomite, blood meal, bone meal, coconut core, C O I R. Right, and uh, you froze. Uh, I froze. What did I freeze on? Uh, blood meal, coconut core, and something else. All right, then you go into uh, green sand, gypsum, kelp meal, dolomite lime, which um, raises the pH of acidic soil. It's just the opposite of what I need. There's uh, rock dust. Rock phosphate, shellfish meal, and sulfur. Now, one of the things I was reading, and I'm trying to remember where it was. It was on um, uh, the original guy that did this old house, and then he went to do uh, he did stuff with Sears for a while, and then he came back to this old house. Uh, what's his name? Just lost. Him. Not Bob Vila, the other guy. Oh, shoot. The guy with the mustache, right? Um, the one that was in there first. Anyways, um, there was there was a, a web page where he was talking about um, the uses of different things for it. And he, he, he had little blips, little blips, little blips. Big blip on, guess what? Epsom salt. All the different ways of using Epsom salt. How much you use here for this? How much for that? Um, one of the things that they that he mentioned in there, which of course you know he's pulling from all these other gardeners and stuff, information for it. Like if you're planting uh, your tomatoes and you're ready to move, plant the pot, put a tablespoon of Epsom salt in the bottom of the hole and mix it up a little bit, then drop the drop it in. Uh, once they start growing, uh, you can take a, a little spray bottle. Uh, they could get, take a gallon of water, a tablespoon of Epsom salt in that gallon of water, mix it up, and then uh, use a spray bottle and spray the foliage in the morning, mid-morning, of the tomato leaves, and it helps them get more vibrant and everything else. And, right. and you just broke up a little bit. That was a great idea. And so, uh, oh, Kraken, iron oxide, good old rust. Yeah. Adding it. But, you know, the Epsom salt, there was a lot of different things, and I'm trying it right now with the stuff I'm doing. And actually, when I started, you know, some of the, my plants there, and we're looking at where it starts, I gave them a spray every other day, just a light misting of it. They perked right up. And evidently, when seeds germinate, they have a bit of sulfur in them, and they use it up in the germination process. Well, um, Epsom salt is uh, magnesium, Sulfate, sulfur, and the magnesium is, the, uh, is the, one of the big minerals they need. So that's what uh, that's you know one of the other reasons why. But yeah, there's um, some really uh, good articles on. It. I wish I could remember what the, that, his name is now. I can't remember his name. Uh, it's all right, we'll figure it out later. Yeah. Okay, but, yeah. So anyway, so yeah. So but, um, so a couple of the ones things that I found that were really listed heavy and hard were. Um, Epsom salt, coffee grounds, egg shells. Um, Courtney, what was that tea you talked about putting on after it sprouted a little bit to keep them from getting uh, um, stem rot? And uh, comfrey tea. Maybe that. Maybe it was. Maybe it was comfrey tea. tea. And um, bone meal is really good. Bone, bone, uh, bone meal, yeah. Those were the big biggies that just about everybody was mentioning around. 
as the as you know, if you did the if you did the pardon the pun digging to find the information. Sorry, okay. Dave. I had to say it is right there in front of me. I had to say it, Dave. <laughs> but all people forget because Uncle I've been guarding for a long time. What's the vitamin everybody misses when they transplant? And this is for all the leafy crops and summer vegetables that everybody I know forgets always. And Kathy knows what I'm talking about. I do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I do too. But I just, I have so many things I can't think of. Or which one is he? Just knows it. Which one? It comes after A. B. Oh, B. Yeah, the B. The B complex stuff. Yeah, especially for transplanting bare roots. Mm -hmm. Duh. My mom always beat me over the head with that. We had to make a a a, a, a vitamin B um, mixture whenever we did. We soak them in at first before we you know, while we were digging the hole to trans bare root transplant and watered it with that with the first one. Howie makes a good point too. Uh, pathway soil. Mm -hmm. All right, I'll throw that one up. <laughs> yeah, even you have you're able to do a, a food forest. Some, some of our viewers in here are still in in, in Ur suburbia, and they're planting either in their own little tiny backyard or doing things on their porch. Right. On uh, on that one, folks, you have to be careful. It's not old TVs or big screen panels. It's biodegradable waste. You mm -hmm. dig a hole. You put the stuff in there. You do not put in your CDs or your electronic gear in there. It doesn't work. It's only for like kitchen scraps. I have to tell this to people because I've seen some people, won't it go back into the soil? No, CDs do not go back into the soil. Or like what Fishes and Loaves is saying, you don't want your neighbors going over there and pooping on the forest floor. Yeah. <laughs> All right, uh, Courtney, you had your chance, and Carol beat you to it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord. Potassium. Potassium. Yeah. And that's what one of some of the stuff that the, um, the zolomite and the green sand puts in the soil is potassium. Oh, that's where also where um, bananas come in. If you have bananas that have gone bad, add them to your compost because they are loaded with potassium for that and that don't you know one will help but if you have or side squirrel squirrel if your local store you find them throwing away some of the um the produce and stuff harvest that produce for your uh, compost pile because your your you know bananas get tossed out all the time well, I know back when I was a kid, and yeah, that was back when dinosaurs and brontosaurus. I, I used to ride a brontosaurus to school, so let's just leave that stuff alone, folks. Um, but back when I was a kid, a lot of the farmers had worked out a deal with the schools uh, in the area to pick up food waste, not garbage, but the food waste when they, you know, they cleaned the plates and everything off, and you know, they set it up so they could come and collect that. And they use that to help supplement their own farms. And the schools I were in were you know, fairly good sized, but there was a lot of waste every day out of them kitchens. So there was a lot of mulch beds and stuff like that. They got fed very, very healthily. So, I mean, that, that's, you know, check with your local school to see if you can work out something with them. Um, places like Dunkin' Donuts, Waffle Houses, McDonald's for food waste. You don't want garbage. You want the food waste. Yes, Courtney, I am grumpy. I admit it. Right. Uh, be, you got to be careful when you use the willow juice extract because if you put it on the wrong tomato, you have a wooden tomato. And I, people look at me, what's a wooden tomato, Uncle Al? That's when your tomato goes fibrous. It'd be tough as a hardball. You bite into it and you have teeth like Uncle Al. Okay, so you have to be careful when you're using willow tea or willow juice because it will cause the plant to fiber up. Also gets rid of pests and stuff, but you don't want to eat a wooden tomato. Okay. So you got to use, use it with moderation. Don't go overdo it. 
Oh, you'll find out if you overdo it. And it's like, I can kill a cow with this. You just throw it and hit the cow. Cow falls dead. Kraken, we've been there. We've done that. Watermelons, pumpkins, tomatoes. We've had it all grown in the compost pile before. I just planted a bunch of potatoes and onions in our compost pile. <laughs> if you want to see the world's biggest compost pile, you go out to New Jersey, Fresh Kill site. That's the biggest garbage dump on the East Coast. And they have wonderful flower beds and vegetables, all from the, the garbage. Mm -hmm. One of the um, most creative and I probably most useful things that I came across somebody doing was he found um, like an, a, an old used uh, garbage disposal and put it into a frame outside and ran electricity to it. But he would run all of his, his um, food waste and garden waste and everything else. He'd run it through that into a bucket right below it. And it would be so ground up that he could put it directly into the garden. Um, not even have to worry about putting it in the compost pile to be breaking down because it was already at that point that it was just so chewed up and um, and everything. So he put it like directly into his garden and got the nutrients right away. Um, so I thought that was, that's a pretty great idea. <laughs> so if you're able to, you know, come across anything like that and set it up like that, that would be um, a really great benefit rather than waiting a year or two for things to break down like that. Okay. Um, uh, Carol said, I can't get willow juice, no willows. But that's, I think, we talked about. Someone was talking about the aspirin. You can crush up an aspirin and make a make a um, willow juice from the aspirin. Right, yeah, it has to be heart attack. Right, yeah. it has to be baby's aspirin. Do not use the full strength because that's too hot. And then uh, I think Nina, uh, if you do Nina's method with the sardines, fresh pack in water, not oil. You do not want to put oil into the plant area. But would mustard work? Sardines and mustard are supposed to be pretty good too, you know. To eat, yes, but the mustard, no, it'll kill the rootlings, the the roots off of it because it's a astringent. Hey, hey, Bob. Hi, Bob. It's a astringent and it'll cause the roots to burn. Uh, it has to be sardines in clear water, and you put it into each hole. And what it does, it, or anchovies, uh, but it depends on the plant. The plant will absorb the the fish and grow stronger and bigger. But if That's it has oil, mustard, well. or uh, what you might call it, what? Uh, it's not barbecue sauce. The other thing, my I was yelling at my nephew. Uh, shoot, it's yeah, like sure. France red 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 hot sauce. Buffalo. Oh. That's it. Buffalo sardines. Don't put that into your planning mix. No. Well, see, that, that makes a really good use for escargot because I sure won't eat it, but it sure give me a good place to put escargot. How many people know what escargot is? We have a problem with that because it was one of the, the snails that ate the California snail. California snail was a little tinky thing. And back in the 20s, what they do, we'll raise escargot. So they used to have these great um, sealed up visqueen beds of escargot snails and guess what happened the market fell and everybody let loose all their snails that's why we have those big hunker snails all over california hey caitlin yeah. all righty so let me bring something else here up here uh oh, hey, what hey, the heck oh, wrong hey. one uh, you're right. still up there sorry <laughs> oh, if you eat escargot at my house, it's the ones I pick out of the garden. Now, uh, I was hoping that Ron, Ron was going to be in here. Ron is the author of The Green Wizard's Guide. And uh, I know every, every time Dave gets a book, he gets gives it away to somebody. And But I, I got the, uh, the, the Kindle version. I put it on all my Kindles and my wife's Kindle, so we got copies all over the place. I've read it several times, but it's really interesting on uh, on things to do to help get your not only your garden but your lawn growing back the way it's supposed to without using a ton of commercial chemicals on it. 
And no. it, it, folks, it's not just a simple little book to read. Um, it's short. It's got a little bit of humor to it. Just a little bit. But there's homework in it, too. You actually need to go to his vi YouTube channel and watch a couple videos to actually finish out the information in the book. <laughs> Excuse me. Sorry. But that way you actually learn. You learn by either doing, seeing, and then you have to repeat it. And they say on an average person, in order for them to learn something, needs to do it three times. So get the book, read it, then go watch a video, finish out the book, then go watch the video and re read your answers to make sure they're right. So that way you actually learn the information. Yeah. But yeah, his book is uh, very good, loaded with information. Now, there's one thing we haven't touched on. Oh, Uncle Al stepped out. Dang it. I put up both the links for um, the Green Wizard. Yeah, thank you. You're now, Uncle Al is really good talking about this. Um, but if you, back. if you have any milk that's going bad, and uh, Ron uh, talked about this as well, if you're using uh, cow manure and stuff and you wonder if it might be a little hot, you put it at the bottom of the pot or whatever, put the milk on top of it, the enzyme in the milk super activates the decomposing, you know, whatever and everything, all the microbes and all the other fun stuff to make it so by the time you get down to it, it's not burning them. Right. And also it provides phosphorus, calcium, um, phosphorus, calcium. I forgot the third one. Vitamin D. No, no. Uh, it's, <laughs> it's, uh, Calcium, yeah. phosphorus, enzymes. There's something else I forget uh, with rotten milk and yogurt. Um, oh, the, um, yeah, the bacteria. That's it. Yeah. The I'm getting old, folks. Nibble. I'm getting old, so I forget things. That's why I don't enter any of these contests and stuff, because I already got my parsley out. My parsley is already this big. And I forget, I planted something else. I, um, let's see, I got my green onions going. I got my kale going again. I got my tomatoes. My seedling tomatoes are about this big. Yeah. Uh, Carol, you just reminded me that the, 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 Don, the lemon Don um, is for chasing the ants away from your raised planter beds. Yeah, uh, and, and for other critters in your lawn, that you know the bugs in your lawn, you don't want there. For some reason, the lemon don places them away. That's good to know. I've never heard of that before. So I've used don, but not lemon don. Did yeah, you read Ginger's good. comment. Ginger's. Uh, okay, we have lots of fat, juicy slugs, and we give them beer. They get drunk. They don't remember where they are or where they've been the night before. I take care of slugs. I do it like escargot. Just don't tell people it. It's not slugs. It's escargot. It's got garlic and butter. It's delicious. Enjoy. Yeah. Yeah. We put it. We put out the little lids. Lids with the uh, with the uh, beer in it, and we put out another little lid with salt in it. They drink the beer and they go, oh, th this one's all empty. There's another one. Let's go to it and they dive into the salt before they realize what it is. And in the morning we have all the shriveled up uh, slugs and snails around it. No, I wait at night, have the headlamp on, and I'm looking for slugs and snails. And then my family, this is really good wine-soaked escargot, Uncle Alan. Yeah, fresh out of the garden. I'll use a black light instead of just your regular headlights. Uh, I, it's a red tint, so it should be oh. an old, um, Okay, okay. Black light can't see too well anymore. Okay, well, black light will make everything glow and you know exactly where they are. I know. <laughs> but I have fun. <laughs> it's like they ate my crunchy quesadilla, quesadillas. Yeah, yeah uh, they were upset what was the crunch was. It's so crunchy. What is it, Uncle Alan? Locust. And they all looked at me. We're not going to eat your quesadillas anymore. No, 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 no. It's cheese and grasshoppers and locusts favorite things that kids like and they all look at me no no grasshoppers no locusts all but right. you ate 12 it's so, so good for you that's where you got your nickname huh <laughs> uh, what that old <laughs> yeah 
All right. Uh, where was it? Where was it? Where was it? All right. Mung, mung, the, the. Mung bean. Yeah. So I know I've heard, I know if besides Howie, I've heard other people talk about it as well. Um, I'm not exactly sure what a mung bean is, a mung bean is. It's bean sprouts. Oh, just bean sprouts. Yep. What are you trying to do with it? Eat it or fertilize? No. Oh, for this, is what, this is what Howie said. Look down below. Yeah, you can yeah. do that. Yeah. Basically, you're fermenting the sprouting bean water, and you pour it over the plants. Korea does that a lot. Yeah. But it, it depends on the vegetables, too. It's mostly for leafy green vegetables. I had... Disney moment. Uh, I saw, yeah, I, saw, I, saw. I had to put that up there since he put it in the chat. I had to put it up. Anybody that uh, pokes fun at themselves, you're, you're a number one in my book. I poke fun at myself all the time. That's why I'm full of holes. <clears throat> Uh, Nina's got. Oh, there we, there we go. Uh, Kaylin says that uh, mum bean is similar to a lentil. Mm -hmm. And uh, what, who, what, where? Discover sustainable. Discover sustainable. There we go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but works for them too. Which is one of the reasons. If y'all go back through my playlist, you'll see I did, did a small review on a, uh, a UV light. That really highlights that stuff. Black light and UV light at the same wavelength, which basically a standard UV light off a of Wish or Amazon is going to be at that wavelength, will do you a, a great bit of work in your garden in the evenings. And once it's dark, you take that light out there and you can find all kinds of stuff that you didn't realize was there. Mm -hmm. But my favorite thing is to keep uh, uh, tomato hormones even away, keep the moth that lays their, uh, the eggs for the larvae. Is you plant you plant your uh, tomato your uh, tomato plant, you put a little uh, borage next to it. Something about the borage chases them away, oh, and or it draws in a wasp that um, goes after the worm. Leave enough room for that borage, though, because they aren't just little plants. <laughs> yeah, they, they'll, 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 they'll they're they're big and bushy, but you, you know, absolutely, they're just they're very. Um, I don't want to say spiky, but they're very um, prickly. Prickly. There you go. Prickly, fuzzy. Um, it's like stinging, like stinging net, net, like stinging nettles. It's very. Yeah. yeah. You, want, you want to wear you want to wear uh, garden gloves when you're uh, when you're when you're thinning out the borage. Mm -hmm. But borage is really does one thing really cool. I, I'm not the only one that noticed it. Uh, someone else, I think, was it Brett or was it? Um, Tim at um, Rich Life talking about bees love borage. Yes, they do. And, and, and they get very mellow after visiting the borage plant. <laughs> I don't know. Yes. It's like uh, um, whatever, but it just makes them mellow. Remember my, my wife's garden in the front yard there in California. I can go out there and I can stand out there and I can mess with the borage plant and bees just oh, hi. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, they don't bother you at all. So. Have you used, oh, have you used praying mantises for insect control? Hmm. Yes, we thought we uh, actually one year we ordered a thing of praying mantis, put it out, and we only had one praying mantis stay in the yard. The next year, most of the descendants all came back, they all went out from different directions, made nests. And then all those, you know, spread out, and they, so they wind up coming back to our ours from different uh, directions. And we had like fifteen green mantises one year. Next year we had two or three. Next year we had about twenty. And it goes like that as they move as they move around year after year. So if you keep green mantises or ladybugs, they're not all going to stay there. But the next year, you're going to get the the next season, next generation coming back. So what you do is you go over to your neighbor's house and dump. Ladybugs and praying mantises over their house, so they just come over to your house. Actually, go around up a little here, a little there, a little all around the whole neighborhood, and let them go all over the place. I mm. uh, see so, you know, uh, praying mantis, ladybugs. What's the third one that's really good? Mm. Unfortunately, snakes. <laughs> Yes, snakes and lizards are uh, go, go in there and, get, and clean stuff up. But there was uh, another insect that um, 
my wife was actually thinking about ordering, you know, getting a little thing, a thing of them. <sighs> Can't remember. Sorry, brain fart. Bees? Bees? No, bees are natural. This is something you can order a, you know, a, a, a seed pack of, you know, or, 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 you know, a little nesting of them, and then they hatch out and they go. Right. It's uh, either parasitic wasp for the tomato hornworm. No, or not the tomato hornworm. Uh, definitely not. No, it's an insect that would that kills. It, go, it also goes after if it's like um, huh? goes after if it's like ladybugs do, and it goes after something else. I can't remember what it is. I'll think about it. Give me a minute. Uh, anyways, I put hey a guys, flashlight up there. Read, hit, hit the Google. <laughs> I put the flashlight up there. All righty. Um, better. Uh, green banana or best probiotic. Uh, I'm gonna put that. How he said. <laughs> how he always has good information. Once again, if you're not subscribed to Food Forest Food Culture, that's how he. You need to. Okay. Oh, need oil on my weeds. Eight week grow. Eight works. Gosh. Right. Yeah, we talked this on Courtney's channel. If you do spray neem oil, it's expensive. So watch where you're spraying it. Mm -hmm. It will get rid of the pests, but you know you don't want to pay twenty six dollars an ounce. Yeah, that that's the true stuff, not the diluted weird stuff in the quart yeah. jars. You want to get real. Knee oil. Something else that um, uh, that, that reminded me of, and I even did a video. On, no, I did. I did the video, but I never put it out because things went a little uh, wacky, and I just lost it. Um, vinegar, salt, right, and um, Epsom salt. Um, make a wheat kill, a, a grass killer. You got the grass coming up in the cracks of your of your driveway or whatever. You don't want to put, you know, Roundup on there or any of the other nasty stuff. Vin uh, vinegar and um, the vinegar, salt, and Epsom salt mixture. There are plenty of videos out there on it already. Um, but yeah, you just mix it up and you just, you know, you can just dribble it or you can spray it on the grasses in and around the uh, the cracks of the driveway. What's up? Yeah, Dave. Oh, Careful. You know there is an edible plant that grows between the cracks in your sidewalk. I can't remember the doggone name of it right now. It begins with a dandelion. Huh? Dandelion. No. 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 no Persane. There it is. Also, um, wild chamomile, which is like a, a, a pineapple weed. The pineapple weed grows in there, too. Yep. So, so be careful what you're spraying because you could actually be killing off some food. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, know what you know what you what you what's growing around there, <coughs> and all right. So our cabin in the woods, that red thing behind Dave, other side, Dave is his first aid kit. See that little white cross on it? That's yeah, the thing right there. Yeah, that's his first aid kit. Yeah, that's the that's the average one. Right. Everybody and needs to have one that size. Yep. Everybody. All right, there's the uh, black light Dave was talking about. Yeah. And that'll help you a lot in your garden in the evenings when you're trying to get rid of pests. Yeah. And that's nice and bright. That's on yep. my wish list. And it'll help you clean your bathrooms more efficiently, too. And your stove. Yeah. And your stove. And if you have little grandkids, they'll let you know where they uh, took their diaper off at. Also, they're great for finding hors d'oeuvres, like scorpions. Or finding finding where the cat went, where the dog went. This went downhill quickly. <laughs> <laughs> What's wrong with scorpions? Scorpion and the honey is great. No, we're talking, we're talking about the pee and the poop from animals and stuff on your carpets. But yeah, but the black light picks up organic matter. Right. All right. Yes. Yeah. Uh, oh, Howie's got a thing here. Uh, boom, boom. Enzymes for complex molecular building and microbes in your gut is the biome 
and enzymes that are part of the gut biome as you are born. Yeah. Hey, I'm not rancid and old. <laughs> uh, That's so true, Ginger. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh boy. Constantly <laughs> cleaning your house. All right. Um, uh, that, that grass killer, though, recipe that Gil is giving, make sure that you don't um, spray that on your plants in your garden. Right. It'll kill your plants, yeah. too. Broad, broadleaf plants will kill it quick. Yeah. Uh, the, there's only one plant I ever, I've heard of that you can spray it on and it won't bother it. Um, asparagus. Really? Uh, um. Uh, uh, CJ at Chick Happens, every, he's putting videos on every year. He has an asparagus bed. He takes a big bag of salt and he salts that asparagus bed. Hmm. It kills everything else. The asparagus doesn't, it comes up. Okay, good. We got all the nutrients. Nothing else is growing here. And he gets big asparagus every year. Right, because um, asparagus likes salt. Yeah. And don't use iodine. It has to be a table or mineral salt. Yeah. <laughs> Excuse me. <coughs> because uh, if you use iodine on asparagus, you get black spots on the asparagus plant uh, it, because of the iodine. If you use minerals like Himalayan salt, that'll work fine. If you use canning salt, that'll be fine. But know your salt levels of the soil because you're going to ruin that salt for everything else. If your asparagus bed leaches to your tomatoes, this is what happened to your tomatoes. Yeah. That's why you know, if you check out um, CJ's video, that's Schick Happens, S-C-H-I-C-K. Actually, it's the name of the road he lives on. Um, but he, like, he's got his raised planter bed, and he's got like a, a three-foot walkway all the way around it. <laughs> Nothing else is around there. They add, I just dropped uh, a link to another good channel, too. What's that Prep other setters. great channel? Prep Setters? Mm -hmm. okay. Right down there, folks. So, yeah. Uh, let's see. I'm trying to think. What else was there? Let me grab my little thing here and look at it again. You shoot them with a 22 and add sweet potatoes to it. All right. Uh, a little ginger to cut the smell. That's for skunks. Okay. I, I got a good solution for skunks, too. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, I just showed it to Gil earlier. It's called a hot sun. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, let's see here. Bone meal, eggshells, uh, biochar. Oh, biochar. Go back to bi biochar. Re reading up on biochar. I just found out that my son-in-law has been trying to make biochar the wrong way. He's using a hot fire. It's supposed to be a cold fire. We right. get, get it when you let it smolder and, let it, you know, not big flames and stuff to make biochar. You're driving the moisture away from it and making it to a living charcoal. Yeah. And you really want to know about biochar, check out a couple of uh, Howie's videos on it. He's, I mean, he lo he makes biochar all the time, and it helps keep down, and the way he spreads it helps keep down the pests in his garden. Cuts down on the maggots. Yeah, and the guy, the, some of the ones that crawl across the top, when they go crawl across it, it's it, the biochar is still sharp and it kind of cuts the mess they crawl over. That's uh, usually centipedes uh, and millipedes. Yeah. Okay. Oh, information. Green stand, uh, gluconite is, mine, is, is a mineral mined mainly in New Jersey, of all places. And Azomite is uh, mined in Utah. So, and then I, I, there was another one that um, uh, Ron, the Green Wizard, uh, had mentioned several times, and I couldn't find. I had a glitch in my um, on my wish list, and uh, I lost a couple of my wish list things. And it was one of those items on there um, that it's it's mined up in Canada. And of course, the U.S. is like, oh, we want to put that here. That helps gardeners and gives our people. Fruit. No, anyways, um, <laughs> but it's a it's another similar thing as to azomite and green sand. It's a um, pre uh, prehistoric, what do you want to call it, um, area where, or the, uh, the the glaciers ground up right. all the rock and everything. It was buried under it, and now you know, and the glaciers recede and spread. 
it pushes it farther out down as it does goes back and forth. So oh, on I the asparagus, and you grow it on the. Uh, but he mentions it in his book and on his videos. Right. This is from the Kraken. In East Coast, if you do that, it will grow because they put salt on the roads. And guess where all the salt runs off in the spring? Into the ditches. Right. So you plant your asparagus there. And it will grow nice, nice asparagus. Of course, you get everything else with the asparagus. But that's another video. Okay. All right. Um, yeah, I think we covered all that. Right. Um, Kathy, what was the other thing for comfrey? Besides, it was, it was what was the herbal uses for? Comfrey, uh, comfrey is so great all around. Um, you can take you wanted to use just the leaves, not any of the stem, because if you put any of the stem into your beds or your compost, it will actually grow a whole nother plant. So um, just use the leaves and you can, so many different uses. In the garden, um, you can chop them up and incorporate them into your soil. You can um, just take the leaves, because they're huge leaves, you can layer them on top of the soil, uh, you can put them, it's really good to grow them like at the base of trees because they, the roots run deep and bring the nutrients down in there too. So it can help, um, you know, like fruit trees and different things like that. Um, comfrey, um, and then you can, you can take the leaves, make a tea from it and um, actually use that to um, make a composting tea to, uh, fertilize your your veggies in the garden so that's another great way because they're packed full of minerals um, for yourself medicinally um, the it the kind of the street name for comfrey is uh, bone knit and so you can actually take a leaf um, I heard that. dip it quickly in like hot water or something and wrap um, your limb or whatever you need that's I mean, anywhere from like um, just tendonitis to a fracture or whatever, and it's going to help heal that so much faster. Um, it's good for um, different like skin issues. Just it's really great for healing. Um, you can dry the leaves and store them to have them for in the middle of winter because then you can just rehydrate them into some with some hot water. I actually. You can make um, a tea from the dried leaves in the middle of winter and then put like a, a cloth in the middle of the um, bone set is totally different than bone knit. So um, they're two different herbs. Um, and then anyway, so you can soak this cloth into your um, comfrey tea and then wrap your your limb again with just this cloth, like, like get it soaking in like a poultice type of thing. Yes, that's Yeah, um, two things I have to tell on the cowboy charcoal, that's manzanita charcoal. Do not get the Kingsford. That has chemicals, which is bad for your garden. Manzanita's charcoal is naturally made. So you can put that out in your garden, you can crush it and put it out. Do not use Kingsford or the self-lighting <coughs> briquettes. That has a petroleum compound, unless you want something growing weird out of the, like, we're going to take over the world. You know, don't use yeah, those charcoals. Yeah. So you want man, manzanita charcoal right. or cowboy charcoal. That's good. Sorry. That's good. Um, one of the last things you can do with comfrey, too, is to um, take the leaves and dry them and then crumble them up and make... Um, uh, an infused oil with them. And so you've got this <clears throat> oil that you can then make with uh, beeswax and stuff to make a salve that's going to end up um, being great for your skin. Uh, you can put it on wounds and, you know, again, it can soak in and help your, um, any bones that might need healing too. So it's it's got so many fantastic uses to it. Uh, here's a trick. Uh, Oh, hang, hang on, Uncle Al. I got a question here Go for ahead. all that. 
Um, now, here on Amazon, I see about a quarter or a fifth of these say Russian comfrey. Russian. Is there, yeah, is there a different type of comfrey or is, you know, cause like this one here says Russian comfrey. This one here is Russian comfrey. This is uh, heirloom, uh, non-GMO comfrey. Um, so I just wasn't sure if there's, you know, different. Um, see, I got mine as, and all you need is a little piece of a root and you can grow an entire huge plant from it. So i would gotten it from a friend of mine like almost 25 years ago. So I'm not sure what it is, but mine does look like Russian comfrey. Yeah. Uh, the leaves and how it bushes out like that in the flowers. Um, okay. So, I don't know, when they say non-GMO, that's just the fact that you wouldn't be feeding it all kinds of stuff and cross-pollinating yeah. into anything else. But, um, yeah, and I don't know that it really makes a difference which comfort you have for the uses that you need. Mm -hmm. uh, but, like I said, when you're trimming the plant and everything, make sure that you're only putting the leaves in your compost that you're not putting, you know, the whole plant in there in the stems because <laughs> you'll have it all growing. <laughs> yes, this huge plant in your compost. It'll be, it'll love it in there. So, right. Yeah. Another trick you could use for comfrey when you make the tea out of the leaves, if you have a neighbor's dog that uses your front yard as a bathroom and leaves these horrible yellow spots, you spray that whole area with comfrey. He'll never come back again. And oh. then the nice thing is that revitalizes the soil from all the um, what you call it? nitrogen and salt waste and stuff. And soon it's back to green again. <clears throat> and you don't have this little round yellow circle all over the front yard. That's a great idea. Well, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, we've hit the, we've hit the hour mark here. Um, Dave, are you, do, you have, uh, do you have a topic for next Tuesday yet? Yeah, you missed it. Doc Bones and Nurse Amy. Oh, Doc Bones and Nurse Amy on Dave's channel next Tuesday, 9 o'clock Eastern. That's going to be fabulous. They're absolutely fabulous. And then I'm following that up next Tuesday with... I don't know. We may go two hours. We may push you out. <laughs> oh, then I'll just say, then I'll just push right on back to the end and pick up when you're done with Nurse Doc Bones and Nurse Amy. We'll just push right well, you on know, back. You know... His wife tells him, you know, he has to have his beauty sleep. So she may cut she may cut him off. <laughs> yeah. So, anyways, on Tuesday, mine is going to be no powder, as in pew pew. Uh, so air, tension, compression, kinetic, we can talk about other ways of getting rid of pests or getting uh, meat in the larder. So. I got or plenty of things to wear. Have punchy holes and paper targets. So that's what we're going to be talking about on Tactical Tuesday. It's going to be, uh, you know, non QQ weapons, <laughs> and fun toys. Uh, next Friday, um, on my, on the Friday night special is your favorite garden tool with the giveaway for my fifteen hundred subscriber. Uh, we're going to do that in the middle of that next uh, Friday. Uh, Dave, do you have a topic for next Friday? Lined out yet? Too far, too far out? Yeah, I'll too share far. something for you. Okay. Give everybody something to wish for for your next okay. before your next live. Kathy, what's your next live about? Do you know? I don't know yet. <laughs> don't know yet. Okay. We'll probably be um, continuing on with some of the herbs that I have. So. Yes, and if you have, if you're not with Kathy at North Star Fresh Center. <laughs> She has some great lives about herbs, all the different herbs. I mean, she's just like, you can just, it's an urban encyclopedia of in video to, to go look at. Thank you. Thank you very much. And my lives are Monday night at six o'clock central. Okay. Someone's asking for links here. So, um, Kathy, throw your link in. Right. Dave, throw yours in. Uncle's Al, Uncle Al's is, uh, he has his cardboard there. So he's going to throw, put his cardboard up here. Closer, closer, I'll, okay, there we go. YouTube.com, user at diebullfrog79, that's 1L in bullfrog. 
That's Uncle Al's. Thank you, Wendy. All right. And so, all right. And so, there's uh, Dave's and Kathy's links. Of course, you're here on mine, so you got my link already. <laughs> all right, folks. I think we're going to wrap it up here. Uh, let everybody back east get some sleep. And I'm getting another steak. And you're getting another picture. Take the picture. Oh no, the uh, uh, no. They've been clamping Aww. down stuff like that right now. Next week, I'll, I'll, if I lose on uh, next week's account, next week's not being monetized because we're going to show pictures like that next week. Oh man. Yeah, I know. I'm going to be showing it too. But yeah. Um, so thank you, uh, Kathy, for coming up here, Dave and Al, and everyone in side chat for all your uh, input and sharing information. Howie, especially for his permaculture. Um, those of you that uh, aren't with Howie, once again, food, forest, permaculture with a little green tree is, oh. is his. And we're going to go ahead and end this down. I'd like to say, everyone, if you haven't started the garden yet, try to, even if it's in a couple of buckets, try to grow something this year. Stay happy, stay safe, stay prepared, and we'll all see you around on YouTube.